Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at mutexes within the Go programming language. Now, the use of Go when programming highly concurrent applications doesn't necessarily prevent you from writing systems that could feature race conditions. These race conditions can cause unexpected issues within your systems that are both hard to debug and at times even harder to fix. So we need to be able to write Go programs from the start that can execute concurrently in a safe manner without impacting performance. Now this is where the mutex comes into play. So let's dive into the theory before we go into the practical element of this tutorial. Now a mutex or a mutual exclusion is a mechanism that allows us to prevent concurrent processes from entering a critical section of code whilst it's already been executed by another given process. Now imagine we have a customer with a bank balance of £1,000 to start off with. The customer then tries to add £500 to his account. Now one go routine would say this transaction, read the value of 1000 and proceed to try and add £500 to this balance. However, at the exact same moment, a charge of £700 is applied to pay his mortgage. And the second process reads the initial value of the account balance of £700 before the first is able to add the additional deposit of 500 And it then proceeds to subtract £700 from 1000 now the customer then checks his bank balance the next day and notices that he is down to £300 as the second process was unaware of the first deposit and overwrote the value upon completion of that second go routine. So now that we know what the problem is, let's see how we can fix it using a mutex within our Go system. Now I'm going to jump into my Visual Studio Code editor of choice and I'm going to create a really simple Hello World application. And this is just going to be used to get started. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is to define a mutex. So var, I'm just going to use global variables just to show the concepts. So mutex, sync mutex, and the balance of type int. Now, I'm going to initialize this balance right here. So balance equals 1,000. And then I'm going to define two functions. So the first of which is going to be deposit, which will take in a value of type int and a weight group. So sync dot weight group. And the next is going to be func the uh, withdraw, which again is going to take a value and a pointer to a weight group again. So sync dot weight group, like so. Now, just at the top here, we're going to have to add the import to the sync package, which is going to contain the mutex and the weight group that we'll be using. Now, within our deposit, we are going to want to do the following. So we're going to want to start off by trying to attain the lock from this mutex here by calling the dot lock function. We're then going to want to print out what we're doing. So depositing, depositing uh, to account with balance and D again. And we're going to want to pass in the value we're going to be depositing and the balance itself. Now, just under this, we then want to do the calculation. So balance plus equals value. And then now that we've finished this critical code execution, we can then unlock the mutex. So mutex.unlock like so. And then finally, to tell our Go program that this Go routine has finished execution, we're going to call weightgroup.done. Now in our withdraw function, it's going to look very similar. We're again going to have to wrap the critical code within this Go routine within a lock and a, an unlock call. So mutex.lock fmt.printf withdrawing uh, d from account with balance percentage d and value and balance once again. Next we're going to want to update the balance so this time it's going to be minus equals value and then we're going to want to unlock the mutex so mutex.unlock like so and finally weight group dot done once again. 
Now with this done, we're going to jump back down into the main function and we're going to define our weight group. So var weight group equals sync dot weight group. We're then going to add two to this weight group. So weight group dot add two. And then we're going to create our two goal routines. So go withdraw, pass in 700 and our weight group, and then go deposit. And we're going to deposit 500, which is what we used in the example. Finally, we're going to block our main function until the weight groups have all completed. And then finally, we're going to print out, so print out the new balance, which is going to look like this. And just so it prints nicely, I'm going to come back in here, add a couple of new line characters. And then I'm going to run the, the program. So go run main.go. And as you can see, it starts off by depositing 500 to the bank balance, 1000. And then it withdraws 700 from the account with balance 1500. And the new balance is correctly displayed as 800. So let's break down what we've done here. Within both our deposit and our withdrawal functions, we have specified the first step should be to acquire the mutex using the mutex.lock method. Now each of our functions will block until it successfully acquires this lock. Once successful, it will then proceed to enter its critical section and that will read and subsequently update the account balance. Once each function has performed its task, it then proceeds to release the lock by calling mutex.unlock, which is incredibly important to note. Now there are a couple scenarios that you need to be aware of when working with mutexes that could result in deadlock. And deadlock is a scenario within our code where nothing can progress due to every go routine continually blocking when trying to attain a lock. So the first thing is always ensure that you call unlock. If you're developing go routines that require this lock and they can terminate in a number of different ways, then ensure that regardless of how your go routine terminates, it always calls this unlock method. If you fail to call unlock on an error, then it is possible that your application may go into deadlock as other go routines will be unable to attain this lock on the mutex. Now, the second example to keep in mind is that calling the lock method will block until it attains the lock. So if you call the lock method twice, you're effectively going to block your go routine from progressing any further. So ensure that regardless of how your logic looks within your go routines, it does not do this double call to the lock function. Okay, so those are two examples of how you can go into deadlock with the use of mutexes. So just be aware of them when you're developing your own Go applications. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, what is the difference between a semaphore and a mutex? Now, everything that you can achieve with a mutex can be done with a channel or a semaphore in Go if the channel is of size one. However, the use case for what is known as a binary semaphore or a semaphore or a channel of size one is so common in the real world that it made sense to implement this exclusively in the form of a mutex. So that's all we're going to cover in this tutorial. Now we've been able to have a look at the joys of race conditions and how they can wreak havoc upon an unsuspecting concurrent system. We've also looked at how we can use mutexes in order to shield us from the evil that is race conditions and ensure that our systems work the way we intend regardless of the number of go routines present within it. Now, hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you have any comments or feedback, then I'd love to hear them in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the video for more programming content. Cheers.